here's a new theory that I'm working on right now for the next book that I'm writing. And it's and it's really about the menopausal brain experience. I'm calling it I, I, after talking to Lisa, I'm like, I'm calling it a brain remodel project. If we just look at what happens to us in the perimenopausal years, you're literally your brain is shifting into this beautiful brain. Well, in the research on that, I found a feminist philosopher, and this ties into thyroid hair, who wrote a book called In a Different Voice. And she has a belief that at 12 and 13 is when girls start to disassociate and move away from their authentic selves. And because they have to adapt to a patriarchal world that says you need to operate like this. This is what success looks like. This is what a woman looks like. Now, of course, that's different for the younger generation right, that's growing up compared to what we, we grew up in. But society at 12 and 13 starts to change women and we start to lose our voice and we start to adapt our voice to be accepted by the culture. And there, it, it wasn't lost on me when I was reading this, this book. It's literally called In a Different Voice. It wasn't lost on me that 12 and 13 is when hormones come in. And so then I started thinking, well, during our menopausal years, hormones start to go away. And is it possible that we are actually coming back to our authentic selves and we're actually coming back to using our own voice for the first time in our life? And it's not lost on me that there has to be a connection between the thyroid and our voice and being able to use our voice. And in a culture that hasn't allowed women to use their voice to their authentic selves, is there a piece of thyroid health that is, I didn't get to fucking say what I wanted to say in about a thousand different experiences in my life. And now this neurochemicals armor is coming down and I really want to tell you what I have to say. Like, do we have, I know this is getting really woo-woo, but I think it's part of the thyroid conversation that's not being talked about. Do, is Hashimoto's because we want to use our voice. We want to be authentic. Is there a piece of what women really, the cry that women want to say in today's world that we're not able to say because the world is very patriarchal. Ooh, what do you think? Man, I love that. Okay, so it's not too woo. If you, if you look at Chinese medicine, which predates anything that conventional medicine has ever done, you will see that, yes, that when you have issues in this area, in the throat area, so a lot of women will say, you know, I, I clear my throat a lot or I feel like mm. there's something stuck right there all the time. And then to your point, the the overall voice, like I, I haven't yeah. spoken my true self. I haven't spoken my thoughts. I feel constricted. I feel confined. Like I can't speak up. I'm in a man's world. I'm in a, I'm in a man's working world where I need to yeah. be the woman and I need to be quiet and docile. Can that absolutely bring on thyroid issues? I, I believe so. I mean, Chinese medicine says absolutely yes. Yeah. And, and I'll hang my hat on that all day long. So I think it's that combination. You know, maybe yeah. that is part of the, not genetic predisposition, but that could be kind of one of those legs of the stool that maybe it's the trigger, the stressor, maybe it's a contributor kind of tied into the genetics, yeah. but it, it plays a role. It plays a yeah. role. Which is why we can't throw a pill at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, the, the thyroid medication is a beautiful tool. And, and I put that in the category of hormone replacement. So, you know, when yeah. I have a woman that, that comes in, her thyroid's in the tank, and it's like, well, okay, we need to replace those thyroid hormones that are no longer being properly made by your thyroid because, hey, we ultrasounded it, and your thyroid's itty-bitty, and it's been beaten up, and you have Hashimoto's, and you probably had it for 20 years. Just no one told you. And she says, you know, I just really don't want to go on a medication. I go, okay, wait. If you or your child had type 1 diabetes mm. and the doctor said, you know what, your, your child needs to go on insulin. Insulin is a hormone. You need, they need to go on insulin because their pancreas no longer produces adequate amounts of insulin. You wouldn't be like, yeah, you know what, I really don't want my kid to go on a medication. No, because your child would die without insulin. 
Now, you're not going to die with low thyroid hormones, but you're not going to live a great life. I think that the pill or the medication or the hormone replacement comes in handy there. But what I say about the Band-Aid pills that women get instead, yeah, don't take that antidepressant. You probably don't need it. I mean, it's a very small percentage of women that they really do need an antidepressant, maybe short term for something they're going through, or maybe it really is a brain chemistry imbalance. But I would say that 80 to 90% of all antidepressants given are given for Band-Aid reasons Mm -hmm. that maybe you're not addressing or the sleeping pill or the statin or the blood pressure medication. Those are the pills that I would want to avoid, but we can avoid those pills maybe by taking this pill, which is thyroid hormone. So it's just- And you know, it just comes down to the person. It's so, the thyroid treatment is so nuanced and so personalized to each individual. This is not a one size fits all treatment. That's what conventional medicine does. Here's a pill, here's a pill, T4, T4, T4. Oh, you're not feeling good? Let's raise your T4. I'll give you 125 micrograms instead of 88 micrograms. But it's not going to do the trick. We have to, we have to nuance, treat each person, each individual, as their their biochemistry shows us, as their lifestyle shows us, we have to treat that, that full person. Yeah. So it, I love that. 